using the radial artery for angiograms and interventions is not something new. The first transradial angiogram was done in Canada in 1989 by Dr. Campo. The first angioplasty and stenting were done in the Netherlands in 1992 by Dr. Kimney. Since then, the transradial approach has become popular in certain cath labs in Canada, France, Germany, India, Italy, Japan, and the United Kingdom. In the United States, most catheterizations are still done through the femoral artery in the upper thigh. Because the radial route is safer and more convenient for the patient, I believe this approach will become the approach of choice in the future. Why should we access the heart through the wrist instead of the thigh? Because patients who have undergone both the procedures say they overwhelmingly prefer the radial approach. Using the wrist is far more comfortable and convenient for everyone. Patients prefer the radial approach. Technicians and nurses prefer it. Patients can walk, eat and go to the bathroom by themselves immediately after the procedure. Patient's modesty is preserved because the groin is not exposed. Patients can leave the hospital within hours. Nursing care is easier and more relaxed. There are virtually no bleeding or vascular complications. There is no need for blood transfusions and there is less cost. After performing over 20,000 catheterization through the femoral artery, I learned that there were many negatives inherent in the femoral approach. These include significant blood loss requiring transfusion, large pseudoaneurysms, AV fistulas, and retroperitoneal hemorrhage. These major complications are not uncommon with the femoral approach. After learning that the radial approach has no major vascular complication, I decided to switch over. 96% of my cath lab procedures are now performed through the radial